We'll now take you through the steps of our next project, which is a monochromatic cubist still life. Step one, select one of the five still life setups that I have created. Here are your options. You could choose one with a church and a picture of flowers, so that would be a pretty thing to draw, and there's a bird and a pepper. Here's another one with a bird and grandma's rocking chair. Here we've got a nice teapot with a bulldog. Oh, look at how cute that face is. We've got a baseball glove, a baseball, an old time microphone, and a birdhouse, kitchen objects. So you will have to choose one of these five still lives to use for your own. Step two, divide the paper into six to eight sections. Keep one large section open near the middle. Step three, place the viewfinder. The definition of a viewfinder is a tool that helps an artist focus on one area. Move the viewfinder around until you find the area that you want to draw. Tape it down if you want. Again, a viewfinder is very important for helping you to zoom in on a particular part of the image, so use it. Don't just rely on your own eyes. Use the viewfinder to help you to really focus on just one part. Step 4. Choose the color that you want to use for your monochromatic color scheme. A monochromatic color scheme utilizes only one hue plus white and black. Some examples might be green plus white plus black, red, violet, yellow, or blue. Step 5. Mix that color with white and paint the entire poster board. This is your background. Again, Mix your color plus white for your base. You'll want to make sure that you mix up a lot so that it will cover the entire paper. And you also want to make sure that it's completely stirred up and mixed together because otherwise you'll have some white streaks and some blue streaks. So make sure that your base coat is very well mixed together. Then we're going to be covering our entire paper all the way to the edges in this color. This is going to be our background color, so it might show through in some parts of our painting. Make sure there are no white spots or poster board showing through. Step 6. Draw the image from the viewfinder into a section of the paper. When I'm drawing this image, I want to make it big. I want to make it fill that space. So just as I see it in the viewfinder, I want it to be seen on my actual paper so that I'm just blowing up that particular image that I'm seeing in the viewfinder and putting that in the space provided. You will notice that this is only a part of my entire still life. So just as the cubists would break down their own still lives and they would break up the image so that we only see one section at a time, we're doing the exact same thing. In the end, your painting will look as if we took a lot of different little images and placed them together in order to create a fragmented or broken up composition. Step 7. Repeat this drawing process until every area is filled. Here is the finished drawing. Step 8. Transfer your drawing to your prepared painted poster board. In this process, we're going to have three layers. The first is going to be our prepared poster board. The second is the transfer paper. Put the dark side down so that your image will show up when you trace over your drawing. The next layer is your drawing, and that's going to sit on top. Make sure it's lined up with your poster. Then you're going to start drawing over each of the lines that you've already created for yourself. Make sure you do not forget any. Step 9. In each small area, paint a value gradation from light to dark or dark to light. First, I'm going to show you this process just in fast forward motion. You can start to see how I'm filling in each of these individual shapes with different values. So I start out with either the dark or the light, 
and I'm taking just small bits of my color that I've chosen and I'm putting it um, so that it's filling in the space of each of these small areas that I've already laid out with my drawing. So I've filled in the nose, just the nose, from dark until light. Then the snout around it, I filled in from light until dark on the bottom. Then I did the eye, and now I'm working on parts of the eyebrow. So I've even broken down the eyebrow into those simple shapes. Now we're gonna slow the speed down a little bit, and I really want you to pay attention to the way that I'm wiping my paint off of my brush before I grab a lighter color or a darker color. And I also want you to pay attention to the speed at which I am painting. I have a lot of paint on my brush whenever I grab it initially with that dark or the light color. Now when I'm starting to add that blue in there, I don't have very much blue, especially when I'm working from the white into the blue. The transition is very smooth. There's no very apparent line. It's very soft from one value of this blue into the next. So now I've started putting that black on there and I'm gonna grab some blue and I've gotta to start to blend that in to the lighter blue that I've created. So I'm grabbing some more white and I'm adding it in until I get back to that value that I had when I worked from the light into the blue. This is one long shape so I'm going to fill it in in two different parts, but I've got to make sure that I'm using great control in the colors that I'm putting down. So I'm blending that blue into the black. Pretty soon I'll grab a little bit of white. You can see I keep wiping paint off of my brush. If you have too much paint on your brush, it's going to be very hard to control what color is actually coming off of it. You might have some black, you might have some blue, you might have some white. So that's going to make that brush stroke multicolored. You want just that pure white coming off of your brush right now. Now I'm wiping it off that white so that I can grab the blue. And I've made a smooth gradation. So in real life, I'm not going this speed at all. You just saw how slowly I had to build up that small area. So you will want to take your time too. Here you can see me kind of messing up a little bit. I went too dark too quickly. So I've got to go back in, grab some white, grab some blue, and build it back up at a slow gradation. Same things happen in there. You can tell here that I start to turn my paper so that I can get a better angle and my hand is not going to be going through wet paint that I already have laid down. I've also left some of my background showing through, so you'll see that light blue right there on the edge. So that's why it was important to pick a color that you were going to be using from the beginning. Continue to paint each area using the same process until the entire cubist still life is complete. Does anyone have any questions?